everybody, how's it going? I am your host, Adrian, coming to you almost live from lovely Petaluma, California, here in Studio MC3 at Quicksurf Internet Studios. The Geekinator is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to head on over to techpodcast.com and check out all the other technology-related shows over there as well. I'd like to encourage everybody to visit us online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. For those of you who have, thank you so much for subscribing. And uh, with that, let's go ahead and get into the cool stuff for this episode. Uh, starting off over at 9to5mac.com, um, Apple has hired uh, lead uh, Lumia camera engineer, Ari Parton, Partonen, who worked on Nokia's PeerView cameras. This is pretty cool. <clears throat> he has posted a post here. On uh, Twitter, today will be my last day working for the amazing Lumia family. In June, I will start a new chapter in Cupertino, California. Much love. So uh, he's a senior camera engineer at Nokia. He has confirmed that he is leaving Nokia for Apple. Um, should be pretty interesting. Apple, you know, obviously they have kind of stayed the course at eight megapixels uh, per you know, eight megapixels uh, per sensor size for their for their flagship cameras, the iPhone 5 and the 5S, even the 4S, I believe, if I remember correctly, was eight megapixels. Um, they've they've stayed that. They've made incremental improvements at that eight megapixel uh, range, going to a backlight backlight sensor, you know, uh, a slightly larger sensor. There's there's been a number of things that they've done improvement wise. Uh, maintaining the same performance, but getting it into a smaller package, that sort of thing. I'm curious to see what they're going to be looking to do by, with this hire. They obviously hired him because they want, uh, you know, the the best camera you have is the camera you have on you when you need to take a picture. And, you know, cameras are, in, uh, ca cameras are how you take pictures. I mean, it's that simple. So, um you know, the cameras on your phones, you know, most people don't don't really see it that way. You know, your smartphone is the, is the camera that you have with you all the time. And 8 megapixels is, is a good range to have. You know, I would consider the minimum to be 5 megapixels to start getting decent pictures where you can print it out with a nice 4x6 or something of that nature. Um, but, yeah, 8 megapixels is, is, is a nice one to have. Uh, you know, more than that, 10 to 15 megapixels is where we really start getting into you know, fairly high resolution. Um, so should be interesting to see what they're, what they're over time, you know, obviously if he's starting in June, there won't be able to make any, it'll be a year plus before we see anything, uh, that he may have been able to affect, but still pretty cool. Nonetheless, from uh, CRN.com, uh, Oracle wins appeal in Google Android suite court rules. It can copyright Java APIs. That's right. Oracle has won an appeal in its four-year-old legal battle with Google over the search giant's use of Java technology in its Android mobile operating system in, develop in a development that could have ramifications for other software vendors. So they... Um, the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Federal Circuit in Washington ruled that Oracle can, in fact, copyright Java application programming interfaces, or APIs, as us in programming land call them, uh, overturning a June 2012 court ruling that said Oracle's use of Java in Android did not violate Oracle's patents, which we all know is a giant pile of baluki. Um in fact, it's so similar to programming in uh, in Java, or it's so similar to programming. Java programming is so similar to programming in Android. I'm trying to say it, that that Java developers have no problem programming Android type things. And this could I've programmed a fair amount in C sharp, and this could actually have uh, an effect on C sharp too, because there's a lot of aspects of C sharp that look an awful lot like Java. So, um, you know, primarily being a Java developer and, and uh, you know, transitioning at, at a previous job to doing a fair amount of C-sharp uh, development, it it was, you know, shockingly similar to Java, so much so that it was very easy for me to, and very quick for me to switch over to C-sharp. Um, so, and the same thing with Android. It's very, you know, looking at Android source code for Android applications is so much like Java, it's not even funny. So, um, 
you know, I'm curious to see what ramifications this has. Uh, you know, I can totally see Oracle going after Microsoft. <laughs> I mean, that that would be pretty shocking. Uh, but still, you know, it can happen. From CNET.com, Facebook kills Snapchat clone poke and Facebook camera. So there are two unsuccessful apps uh, in the iOS app store. They've removed poke and Facebook camera. They're essentially clones of other successful apps from the iOS app store. The uh, Facebook has confirmed on Friday that they are no longer supported and have been removed. Um, Poke was a rival to popular messaging app Snapchat, and Facebook camera was a clone of popular photo sharing app Instagram. So, you know, obviously we all use Instagram. Uh, personally, I, I don't really use Snapchat, but I am an Instagram user. So it should be interesting. Uh, you know, Facebook basically is trying to springboard off of their success and was unsuccessful in doing so. From the Register, California lawmakers greenlight mobile kill switch bill. Uh, this, I think, is a hugely important uh, smartphone theft is actually, especially when you have a flagship or an expensive smartphone that's several hundred dollars is actually... Uh, a, a real huge problem, especially in uh, larger urban areas. Um, California is basically, uh, you know, trying to trying to pass a law that says you can't sell smartphones in California unless you there's some facility for doing a remote kill switch on them. Now, um, if you own an iPhone and you've signed up for iCloud, I you know you you can in fact you know do a remote kill switch. Uh, or you can, in fact, remotely wipe the phone. So, uh, and, and it's not quite a brick, but it protects your personal information. So the story here, the Golden State is one step closer to passing a law which would require mobile phone vendors to implement remote bricking capabilities in all handsets. The California Senate has approved SB 962, which mandates a kill switch mechanism in phones which could render stolen handsets useless and hopefully deter Thieves. Now, I do know with iCloud, I can remotely wipe the phone, and until I actually disassociate that physical phone from my iCloud account, uh, nobody else can use the phone. So it effectively is bricked. There's no way of getting around it that I can tell. Uh, in fact, I, I, had, I actually ran into this where I, I had a, a, an older phone that was associated with my account that got passed off to a family member. And it wasn't until they, they couldn't get the phone set up or even use the phone or do anything with the phone until I went in and removed that phone from uh, my iCloud account. And then they were like, okay, now I can set the phone up. So um, pretty interesting. You know, they had to have my either my iCloud password, which, which makes my iCloud account a, a kind of a target for somebody trying to get my password, or they had to have me go in and remove that device from my account before they could set the device up after I had already wiped it. So pretty interesting. Anyway, the uh, here the law faced opposition from mobile phone vendors, <laughs> unsurprisingly, um, who argued against being forced to implement this feature into their devices by government mandate. I think it's a good idea. I don't th necessarily think it's a great idea for the government to mandate that sort of thing. However, we can look at a parallel that Ca uh, California did way back in the day uh, with um, emissions. You know, California was kind of one of the first California Air Resource Board or Air Quality Board or whatever it is, CARB, uh, for CARB emissions. You know, they were kind of the first uh, government or the, the first state in the United States that says you cannot sell a car in California unless it meets these emissions standards that they had defined. And, you know, the automakers balked in this and that and the other other. But the reality of the matter is the, the net effect has been significantly cleaner air and significantly better fuel efficiency. So, you know, some things that California does that could be controversial really, you know, are, are, are actually quite good. So I'm curious to see how this is going to roll out. You know, obviously, you know, smartphone makers, handset makers, they're not happy to, to, to implement this. They don't want to. But, you know, I, I think that it's a good thing for consumers and consumers should really start voting with their pocketbooks. If they really want to get these guys' attention, 
Stop buying phones if you can't do a remote kill switch. I mean, it's that simple. I mean, phones get stolen, phones get lost. There's a whole bunch of stuff. I had previously lost a phone and had dealt with, uh, that had personal information on it and, and have in fact dealt with somebody who got that phone and got all the information off of it and used my information, uh, identity theft, and I'm still dealing with that today, um, the fallout from that today. So I think it's a great idea. Always uh, password protect your phones. Every single one of my phones is password protected. iCloud is the single best thing. Once you associate the device with that phone, if you lose it, you can remote wipe it and you can prevent them from um, from uh, signing, uh, resetting the phone up and reusing it. So, uh, you know, it's it's just one of those things where it's like it's all, it's it's, it's really for the consumers, and I really I, I hope that it does go through. From Tech Times, NASA's lunar orbiter has a new version of the famous Earthrise image. It's not as great as the uh, first one, but still, it's pretty cool. 45 years after the first Earthrise photo was taken by NASA astronaut William Anders, a new version of Earthrise was sent back from the moon by the lunar orbiter. Like the first Earthrise image, the new photo shows the Earth as a blue and white sphere rising up into the dark and bleak lunar skies. So, pretty cool. Uh, definitely check it out. Uh, my, I thought I'd share it because I was like, woohoo, that looks awesome. So, uh, from Auto World News, NASA debuts a live HD stream of Earth from the International Space Station that you can watch. Uh, check it out it's pretty interesting you know it's again it's another one of those things where it's not something that i'm going to spend a huge amount of time on but i thought it was cool and if somebody wants to go check it out you know the link is there from the verge what apple is really buying with beats that's right what is apple really buying with beats the news is apple is buying beats by dr dre um for an astronomical $3.2 billion U.S. currency. Unbelievable. I, I think this is cool. I mean, Beats by Dr. Dre is pretty good quality audio, pretty affordable, pretty good quality audio. You know, you can definitely get better quality audio, but you're going to be paying a lot more. Um, you know, I mean, it's not uncommon to have, you know, a pair of headsets uh, like this one here. We're looking at Sennheiser's... Um, HD 280 Pro headsets that I use to do a lot of mastering with um, audio wise and it's not a I think this pair here when I bought it was um, over a hundred dollars and it's not uncommon to have a three four five six seven eight hundred dollar pair of headsets to get you know reference quality audio out of the headsets I mean this is this isn't even Sennheiser's high range high end range and Sennheiser Sennheiser is not particularly known to be a particularly high-end audio company. Um, there are definitely uh, other headsets that are significantly better quality and significantly more money. Beats uh, by Dr. Dre is, is, again, pretty good quality. It looks stylish. It's, it's not bad. It's pretty good quality. And the price you pay, again, it's, it's not inexpensive, but it's not on the high end either for what you're getting. So, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's good. So anyway, um, so they're obviously they're buying it. The story here uh, at The Verge does a little bit of analysis on what's what's really going on behind the scenes. I encourage you to check it out. I thought it was cool. I encourage you to go look at it as well. So uh, anyway, that will do it for this edition of The Geekinator. As always, everything we've talked about is linked up in the show notes, which you can find online over at quicksurf.com. Oh, before I go, please do subscribe to the show if you haven't already done so. I picked up uh, one of these, an Amazon Fire TV. There we go, Fire TV. Um, I'm having trouble actually recording the video output of this. I was going to record the video output on uh, my Blackmagic HyperDeck Shuttle 2. Turns out uh, it outputs uh, RGB over the HDMI and the HyperDeck Shuttle 2 doesn't know what to do with it. So I'm still coming up with a way. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be doing hopefully a review of the Amazon Fire TV and some of the things that you can get with it, but I, I need to come up with a good way of recording the um, recording it in action. So anyway, keep an eye out for that. Uh, that will be part of the, uh, the new show um, 
you know, since we've gone back to once a week for the Geekinator, and then I'll be spinning off a third show um, of tech content that's more, less newsy and more evergreenish. So anyway, that's that. And with that, I will see all of you on the next episode. See you then. Bye.